Rock. We're gonna go catch him up today, boys. Get it started. City, North Carolina is a part of who I am. And me coming down here since I was a kid, I guess you can say I got a little salt water flowing through my blood. Well, Mr. Matt Lamb of Chasing Tales Outdoors and Charles Mazzell of the Crystal Coast CTO chapter put their heads together and got us involved uh, with this tournament. No doubt we were excited about heading east. why we came up with the Carolina Redfish Elite Series is we just don't see a high stakes event in the Carolinas. We've been running the Carolina Redfish Series for three years, which is a three event style, championship at the end, points winner, team of the year. Me and my partner, Jay Feimster, Point Flip Fish, it kind of got tough for us to run all three events. So this winter we came up with, hey, why don't we do a high stake event, one event, big entry fees, big payouts, and see if we can get the following. The vision behind the Carolina Redfish Elite was to build a elite redfish tournament here in the Carolinas, to be able to raise the bar to make a two-day event that pushes the limit while working with the community, youth, and cross-trail outfitters to raise education and awareness of fishing, while having a great time and competing in a high stakes fishing tournament. Point Click Fish is the ultimate fishing network. Over the past seven years, my brother Price and I have designed a network that involves our passion for technology and our love for fishing. That network involves the website itself, which serves as a resource for the community, our live tournament coverage, fishing podcast, and our digital media, where we work with others to bring them news updates and interviews through the community, through the podcast, through our website, and through events like we're doing today. Howdy everybody, Wes and Kyra Hudson from Shallow Sport Boats. We came to North Carolina all the way from South Texas to sponsor the Carolina Elite Redfish Series. The beneficiary, which is the Cross Trail Outfitters, 50 kids fishing, they're gonna have a great time tomorrow. We're really proud to be a part of it and we hope everybody has a great time.
We're going to have Faith Waters to step up and sing the national anthem for us. Faith, if you will, come right on. And I introduced her last night as being 13. She's actually 15. I'm getting a little bit old and I forget things, but uh, she's getting older for on us. Oh, say does that star-spangled Or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Who's ready to go fishing? Oh man. This is something. Never been around a fishing tournament, but uh, this is fun. I'm excited because uh, we've got 30 boats fishing today, two, two men to a boat. We've got to weigh in at 4 o'clock, so this should be an exciting day here on the water in Moorhead City. It was a short night for most of the teams, and as we were getting ready for the launch, we all could tell this was going to be a big tournament. On day one, Greg was with Noah's Ark's fishing team. And as they already knew, right, right the tournament would be a challenge due to the low tide conditions. But few really understood how challenging the conditions would be until the end of day one. Well, I was teamed up with some of the local favorites, Rob and Jake of Sandbar Safari, and uh, we had a good day, and those boys know how to catch the fish. leave a school of two or three hundred fish because they seem to be a lot of little ones and they're a little pressured and spooked right now so sometimes that's what you got to do. On day one I was teamed up with the redfish guys Dwayne and Lee and for some reason they like to pick on me and call me a banana but at least I got a head full of hair. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, back behind. You see, see yeah. the skull? Yep, yeah, these hips are hitting the water. Yeah. Look. Yeah, there he is. I'm going to try to double up. All right. <laughs> Get some momentum going. Get a few fish in the boat. He's legal. He's bigger than that one. We're, you know, it's possible we're actually winning the tournament at this point. <laughs> You're right. You're right. It is possible that we're number one. Right? That's right. It's <laughs> ours to lose right now. <laughs> Got 
kind of spot. It's a, it's a, it's a shallow bay, uh, grass, pretty much a grass flat all the way across with some sand holes. There's several small schools of fish in here, about 20 to 25 fish in a school, like probably two, maybe three. There's also some smaller fish in here that are be back over in the corner. The bigger fish are along this um, south facing bank. We're hoping to run across them and caught some nice ones in practice. You know, perfect size tournament fish. Yeah, I'm glad Dwayne finally called a fish. <laughs> Dwayne, welcome to the game. Uh, I was worried. Kind of got here late. We'll see where the game ends. We'll see where we end. How about that? Being that this tournament was a low tide tournament, the teams knew that they had to work extra hard to get on the fish. Team Sandbar Safari hit several hot spots early on and their hard work had paid off for them. They were able to land two big slot fish by the end of the day that put them in the top five for day one. Redfish guys got onto the fish early as well, and they were able to catch 20 plus fish on day one. But those tournament sized redfish that they had found in practice had already moved on to new waters. Day two was an exciting treat. CTO had a youth tournament going on and we got to follow some of those kids around and some of those kids caught their very first saltwater fish and that was an awesome sight. And now for CTO's Moment of the Week. Sponsored by Dead End Game Calls. Well, on day two, we caught up with Joe Dow, his daughter Riley, and close friend Travis Braswell. And by the looks of things, they had already had a good morning 
and Riley continued her streak of catching fish while the cameras were rolling. Right on the money. Well, after letting Riley take the spotlight for a few minutes, Travis decided to get in the game and he started catching fish as well. On day two of the Carolina Redfish Elite Tournament. We got a place that we got lucky yesterday and found a big school with some other folks and got a couple nice fish out of it. And now we're going to our honey hole today to pick off a couple big fat daddies to bring home, try to bump up the first place today and take it home for Swansboro. That's right. Team Sambar Safari had put themselves in a good position for day two. And with the weather forecast looking to be conducive to good fishing, the expectation was high. Their start on day two was similar to day one. They were finding the redfish early on. While the big boys were out on the water trying to win their tournament, the youth from the CTO tournament were back at the dock weighing in the catches of the day. And by the looks of things, this tournament was already a success. There were young people bringing in trout, drum, flounder, even eel, and they had a chance to weigh it in just like the pros do. After interacting with the parents and the kids during the weigh-in, we knew that this was a success. As four o'clock approached and all the teams started returning to the dock, everyone knew that this could be an exciting weigh-in because only one pound separated the top five teams. All right, guys, so we're going to have Mike Taylor and John Roberts make their way to the hot seat there. Yesterday's leaders are going to be next to team number 22, Team Haynes Payne. Team Hodge Blue, Del Collins, and Robert Trotton heading over here to the measuring table. All right, let's put our hands together. Sam Bar Safari, say go and head up with fish number one. Rob, here we go. Captain Rob, let's talk. Oh, uh, we had a good day. We caught a lot of fish. We got a little tiny 3.05 that's holding for first place on the small fish. Give me some love. Now let's tell everybody why that's important. 
That's important because we threw some 21 inches back that wouldn't have improved our total weight as far as our place, but that one might sneak us in there with a little money. That's what we're hoping. Yeah. You notice their $850 checks. The smallest fish of each day walks on with $850. So that is definitely exciting. That's right. There's many ways to win a tournament. All right, looks like Team Baker Smith, the redfish guys, are making their way over to the measuring table. This Carolina Redfish Elite Tournament has generated a lot of buzz already, and being a part of it right here on the Moorhead uh, waterfront, I think it's going to be a, a staple right here for years to come. Well, we pulled into the spot. There's four kayakers in one boat, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. They, they couldn't see them from that kayak, and uh, we've seen them. First two casts, you're looking at it. So we got fortunate. It was a great day. <laughs> All right, we have a new leader. Can I get my picture with him? 30.25 <laughs> grand total for day two.